Hey everyone, welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Today on the table we are doing an unboxing of a Keyforge Age of Ascension deck. I actually have 12 of these beauties here, and these are actually not from the same box. They actually come from uh, various game stores around my area, uh, where I basically collected decks as I went to tournaments and whatnot, and put them all together here. So I have 12 of them. I'm going to do 12 unboxing videos. I'd appreciate your feedback, any constructive criticism, anything you guys like to see in future deck unboxing videos as we go through these. Uh, just let me know in the comments below. That'd be great. If you like these kind of videos and you want to see more, hit that like button uh, to let me know you like them, obviously. And uh, feel free to subscribe if you're new here. All right, so let's uh, zoom in a little closer and uh, we'll crack our first deck, aka pop our first freshie. <laughs> All right, let's get into our first deck here. It's actually a deck printed in Germany. I believe is uh, where most of these decks that I have are printed. So the ones from Germany of Age of Ascension don't have that uh, flap on the side. Uh, when going to Origins uh, in Columbus, Ohio in the US, we actually noticed all the decks were printed in China and they had the little flap on the side. Uh, so I think that's the difference there in Germany. They're not printing them with that little flap opening. So we'll be tearing them from the bottom on most of these, I assume, unless some of them are ones that I brought back from Origins. Uh, we'll find out, I guess. So let's get to this first one here. We'll pop it open. And set two, all right. And let's see, let's not spoil this. Uh, oh, we got the name Nimrod Bex Realm Bar. And it has, ooh, Untamed Shadows and Sanctum. I like that to start here. Uh, let me just rip the plastic off this guy and struggle doing it, of course. Actually, that wasn't too bad because they do have the red stripe, which I noticed the ones printed from China do not have the red stripe. Uh, so it's not as easy to grab and, and, and peel it around. All right, so here is the deck. Let's uh, flip it over. We'll remove the deck list card for you. We'll just throw that to the side here. And let's, uh, let's get to it. All right, first card out of Untamed is the rare Mighty Tiger. You guys know this one from the first set. Deal four damage to an enemy creature uh, for... Power, obviously. Uh, the next we get a Lupo the Scarred Skirmish. When you use this creature to fight, deals no damage, obvi obviously, in return. Uh, play, deal two damage to an enemy creature. Show to Hazri. So far, all first uh, set cards. And uh, he, we know him. He's the key cheat in a, in a creature. Uh, we have there everywhere. Gain an Amber, deal two damage to each enemy flank creature, deal one to each enemy creature not on the flank. Then we have a Rusnar. Another, another creature, that's good. But we need to be gaining more Amber when we have Chota Hazri in the deck, that's for sure. So we can hopefully shoot up an Amber on an untamed turn and then pop Kichi, right? Uh, he's just running artifacts. If that artifact had an Amber bonus, you gain that much Amber. So it is a kind of way to gain Amber with that guy if there's artifacts that have Amber, but I mean, that's not always the case. So we got Regrowth. We're able to get some creatures back. Uh, amber on the card, that's important. Grove Keeper. So it looks like we're trying to build our board, beef up our dudes. And we actually have two Grove Keepers. And then we have another creature. We got Glimmer. He's a one strength fairy alpha. So you have to play it as your first action on your turn and you'll get to return a card from your discard pile to your hand. So nice way to grab a regrowth, play that, grab another creature, keep your board uh, full. And uh, speaking of full, we have a full moon that goes good with all these creatures we've been seeing. And just to make it more consistent, we have a second full moon. So there's some extra amber we can use the burst to try to get that Chota. Um, Kichi off. And the final card, a common here, uh, the Dusk Witch, another creature to end your turn on. Um, so let's just quickly uh, look at this untamed line here. And yeah, not a bad amount of creatures. Only a couple Amber Pips I see there. Yeah. All right, let's throw that to the side and we'll take a look at the Shadows. So the rare out of Shadows is actually Mac the Knife. He's elusive. You may use Mac the Knife as it belongs to the active house. Then has that action. Deal one damage to a creature. If it destroys that creature, gain one amber. Just like Seeker Needle from uh, Call of the Archons. So this guy is also from Call of the Archons. Who made it to the next set. Uh, we have a Subtle Maul. So there's an artifact for us there. Out of Shadows, we actually have two of those guys. And then we have the Uncommon a Redlock. Who has Skirmish. And uh, basically at the end of your turn, gain you an amber if you haven't played any creatures this turn. Uh, so we'll see if our Shadows line is full of creatures and if that's possible. So another key cheat actually in the deck. Not the greatest one, but at least this card has an Amber on it. And it says if you have not Forge a Key this turn, you may Forge a Key at plus four current costs. So I'd assume in second set, where there's lots of those cards that raise the key cost, seems to be the theme. Uh, you could probably... No, I guess that doesn't really work like that. You'd have to do it at plus cost. Yeah, plus current cost. Never mind what I was saying there. 
Just a meh key cheat. Uh, Merkins. Uh, two power elf thief creature. Play, choose a random card in your opponent's archives. Or the top card of your opponent's deck. Play that card as if it were yours. Kind of like a little wild wormhole-ish action. But I do like the ability to do it out of the archives. I find very fun and interesting. Hidden Stash. An Amber. That's very important. Get to archive a card. Helps you get through your deck. Set up bigger turns later. Uh, we got Yahtzee Gang. Big body. Steal one. And a card I love in the second set. It's good to have. Swindle. Alpha and Omega. So it has to be the first action. And it also ends your turn with the Omega keyword. And you're just still three. That's basically all you're doing on that turn. Uh, Sucker Punch, an Alpha. So we've had a couple Alphas, actually three Alphas, I think, so far in the deck. Uh, this one you're going to play, you get an Amber for it, and if you deal two damage to a creature and it destroys them, you actually get to archive this card, and uh, then you can bring it out on a future turn and kind of keep cycling it, assuming you can keep destroying their enemy creatures. And you cannot use this on your own creature, it is actually enemy creature. And then we have Lamindra, just going to come in, deploy anywhere on the battle line, and give Elusive to her neighbors, and also she has Elusive. And just a little one power creature there. We got Furtive Investors. Got an Amber on it. Action card. Play if your opponent has more Amber than you. Gain one for each key your opponent has forged. So a good, good late game card. A good comeback card. But that is the last Shadows card. And we'll definitely analyze the deck after this. Uh, we'll bring it up in some of the online uh, web apps there. And analyze the stats of the deck. So stick around for that. Uh, out of Sanctum. Let's start it off with a Potion of Invulnerability. We know this one from the first set. Uh, when you have a big board of creatures, this is actually pretty helpful. It's an Omni, so you can pop it on like an Untamed turn and use your Rustnar and your Grove Keepers and whatever else we had in there and use them to fight. Um, but also with Shadows, I guess, but there wasn't many fighty Shadows creatures, I guess. But either way, helps protect your board if you want to be aggressive. Uh, we have a Gorm of Ulm, so some Artifact Control. That's very good. You want to have that. Also an Omni, so you can pop an Artifact when it's... Uh, when it best it is at best an advantage to you, I guess. Uh, equalize, which gives us some amber, and then if we have some amber captured on ourselves, or our opponent has some amber captured, we're able to redistribute that among creatures, so we can spread it out, uh, or put it all on one guy if you want. And same thing again. Equalize another one. We have a smite, ready in a fight with a friendly creature. Deal two damage to the attacked creature's neighbors. We actually have two of those. I wish that card had an amber on it. Uh, we have a merit the marked. Uh, so after Merrick the Mark prevents damage with its armor, you capture one amber for each damage just prevented. Uh, so he only has one armor, but as we know, there are ways to give extra armor in Sanctum. Hopefully we get some of those. Uh, like Protect the Weak to give an extra armor, or the Armor Smith that gives plus one armor to all friendly creatures. So then it really works nice with him when he's getting hit with, you know, Nerve Blast or being fought. He'll be capturing some amber on him, slowing your opponent down. And we actually have two of them. And then to keep him alive and keep doing that, we have a Healing Blast, so hopefully we can get some damage on him. Hopefully at least four. Uh, actually, no. He, yes, we can get at least four on him. He's a five. And if you can heal four off of a creature, so hopefully Brobnar stays popular and you know you get some big, big bodies that are getting damage on him, even across the board. You heal him up and you'll get an additional two Ambers. This could be a three Amber card, possibly. And we have Chalet the Safeguard. He's got to deploy and a Taunt. So you can go anywhere in the battle line. He has four with two armor, so good to protect your creatures you want to keep alive. Uh, and then we have a Blinding Light, uh, which is one Amber. We know this one from the first set. Choose a house, stun each creature of that house. Great card to slow your opponent down. And then we have an Obey the Grim. So there's some capture that's going to work good with the Equalizes. You can move some Amber to this guy and do his Reap Effect. Or if you capture three on him and you want to spread it around, make it harder for your opponent to get back. Uh, yeah, you can do that also. So and then when he reaps, you get to discard the Amber. All right, so that's it, and uh, that's the Sanctum. So let's uh, switch over. We'll jump to the uh, web apps here, and we'll take a look at this deck a little more closely and all the stats. Okay, so I got the deck imported into the app, so it's now in the Master Vault. I will actually drop a link to that uh, below if you guys want to see the deck uh, yourselves and check it out. Um, but here it is on the screen for you. Let's jump into the uh, Burger Tokens deck analyzer I like to use here every now and then just to kind of take a quick look at the deck, uh, kind of sort it out for me. Uh, it has 17 creatures, 15 actions, 4 artifacts. Uh, we see the creatures broken down here. So we only have 4 in Sanctum. That's pretty low. It looks like our main creature heavy board will be out of uh, Untamed with, uh, what do we got there? Looks like 8. And then we got 5 out of Shadows. Uh, but as we know, the Grove Keeper can help beef up some of these guys uh, and then keep them alive. Also, the if we can keep the Dusk Witch on the board, which, you know, never happens. But, I mean, the odd time it might uh, we can get some of these guys coming in readied, uh, but yeah, not many creatures, 17, it's like average, I guess, um, and the power distribution here, uh, we can see there is like 
three, four power seems to be our, our heavier number. Not many fives, only three of them, and one six. So this isn't a beefy deck. Uh, but I mean, those Grove Keepers, they can help out. They can help out. They get down, drop down there at the end of that turn. They give plus, plus one to each of their neighbors. And you have two of them, so they can buff each other if you get them beside each other. Uh, all right, we got 15 actions here. Uh, lots of Amber Pips down the left here. You can see in those yellow ones. We got four artifacts, no upgrades, which is not a bad thing to have no upgrades. Uh, bonus Amber, so 11 cards that have 11 Amber Pips on them. I find that might be actually a little above average in uh, Age of Ascension, but I could be wrong. But uh, it is uh, not a bad number, actually. Uh, I have lots of decks with less. Um, yeah, so the new mechanics, it highlights here the Alpha, Omega, and Deploy, which cards have those on it. So I guess you can kind of see if you're going to, you know, have to drop a lot of Omegas end your turn. I mean, but those are two good Omegas to have. Your Alphas, I think those are all good Alphas. It's just when you start having... Alphas in the same faction that you can use on that turn. Sometimes you got to hold them or dump them, you know, because they're just sitting there clogging up your hand because you only play one per turn. Uh, so, yeah, but three is not bad, I guess. Amber Burst. So we got Furtive Investors that could be two or more Amber, uh, assuming you're behind or your opponent has more Amber than you in Fortune Keys. Uh, I believe that's what it is. Let's see. If we can get it to pop up here. Why is it not? Oh, there we go. If your opponent has more Amber than you, uh, gain one amber for each key your opponent has forged. So yeah, they have to have more amber than you. They have to have keys forged. I guess you don't have to really be behind. You just have to be behind on amber in your pool. Uh, then we got Swindle, which is not bad. For, it's always, always should get you three. You shouldn't be playing it when it doesn't, obviously, because that's not the best turn at all. Uh, and then Full Moon, which should hopefully lead to a couple ambers, assuming you have it when you have a couple creatures that you can play, and having two of them is very nice. Um, no key control, no reap control. In Amber Control, a little low here. Uh, we'll take a look at the stats in Dexa Keyforge next, actually, so we'll see more on this. But uh, we got Swindle, Yahtzee Gang, and then the Capture. We saw Merrick the Mark, and it'll be the Grim. It's not the best Amber Control, I have a feeling. Uh, house Cheating, Smite, and Merkin. So those are those are good to help with the House Cheating. Creature Removal. So Sucker Punch, Lupo Discard, Mighty Tiger, hit a single target. Multi-target, we got Blinding Light, Smite, and they're everywhere to hit more than one target. Key Cheating, Night Forge, and Jota. We've looked at that. Uh, you can ignore this BGR, BRGR score. It's just a, a random score just to make fun of scoring decks. You know, it's kind of, you know, it's hard to do, I guess, and they don't really value it. But, uh, eh. Uh, artifact removal, we got Glorm of Ulm and Rusnar. So having some of that is very helpful, especially with some of the Age of Ascension decks and some of these artifacts they have out there, uh, like Grump Buggies and uh, things like that. Uh, and then we got our archive is just hidden stash. We've got some healing and healing glass. Card draws glimmer, and then the synergies that they're showing so far. You can always submit new ones on here if you have synergies you want to improve this app. You can send them to Andrew at BurgerTokens.com, as you see there. Uh, Choda and Regrowth. Those are two synergies. So that's good to have. Uh, let's jump on over to Dexa Key Forge here. Uh, I will drop links actually to both these apps in the link in the description below. And if you have any other web apps you would recommend you'd like to see used. Uh, in these videos going forward. Feel free to leave those in the comments below and let me know. I'm always curious. I, I know there's other ones and, and I've used them in the past, but these are the two that I kind of look at now just to kind of take quick looks at decks. Uh, all right, so we got a 79 SAS is the current rating at the time of this recording that may go up or down based on card ratings uh, in the app. Uh, and it has plus four synergy and minus one anti-synergy. Uh, what else can we see here? We got our Amber Control, which is only 4.5, pretty low. I personally like to have in the 10 range somewhere. Higher is better, uh, but 9, 10-ish is what you kind of look for. Um, expected Amber. And that, keep in mind, none of these stats take into account any really of the synergies and how the deck overall kind of works together. You have to play it to figure that out, obviously. I recommend highly playing decks before you determine if they are trash or if they're good even based on these stats. I have some decks that have amazing stats, but they play like garbage. They don't really work together very well and vice versa. So uh, the Artifact Control, we actually have uh, 2.5 rating, which is pretty good. Gorm of Ulm, which is a 1.5, because it actually destroys an Artifact, which is always great. And Rusnar does the same. So these are pretty highly rated on the Artifact Destruction. It's just Rusnar, he gets into play and your opponent has a chance to deal with him before you usually can do anything. But I mean, you do have a Dusk Witch, so that, that may, may happen where you can play him uh, on your next turn if Dusk Witch is alive and run into one of the Artifacts and get rid of it. Uh, the expected amber, so it lists all that there. You can, you can hover over it, and it shows you all the ones that gain you uh, amber, how much they rate them. So, for example, for the investors, they're saying is equal to like a two amber gain. But as you know, you play it a lot of times, it gets you only one. 
um, equalize, getting you one. Uh, what else they got? Healing Blast, they rate it a 1.5. Sometimes they'll get you a three, sometimes they'll get you only one. Full Moon, 1.5 rating on those. Dusk Witch, they rate it a two. Um, because it should get you some amber by guys coming in ready and reaping, but yeah. Uh, creature control 8.5. That's not bad. I look for that to be 10 ish or higher, is, is a good number. You gotta, you gotta keep that board under control. There's lots of threatening creatures that can really tank your game if you leave them in play for too long. So, being able to handle that and keep the board in check is always a good thing to look at when you're trying to look at decks and figure out which ones to play. Uh, so, this one's got blinding light to kind of slow them down, smites. Potion Vulnerability, Sucker Punch, Mac the Knife, they're everywhere. Lupo the Scarred Mighty Tiger. Lu they're everywhere. I like to see that with a Save the Pack. Uh, Save the Pack, I didn't like to see in my first set decks, but in this one with this card, I have quite a few uh, decks that have both those together. Some of them I have a couple Save the Packs and a couple of these cards, and it's the, yeah, that's good. It's basically a one sided board wipe if you can get it going. Uh, but at least the card has an Amber in this case, and it can deal some damage, take out some of those threats. Assuming they're on the flank, it can hit some of the two. Uh, power guys and then deal one across the middle which probably won't get rid of too much but i mean it can handle some good plague rat armies right <laughs> uh and then yeah we have our deck manipulations these are cards i guess that draw or archive that kind of thing so we got a bunch there an eight rating and then p is effective creature power 7.3 so just i guess a rating on how big your dudes are i'm not sure what i'm looking for there obviously higher is better it means you got beefier guys i guess and there's our 11 bonus amber we were talking about before. Key cheat cards, we got two. We have no extra draw cards. And we have two archive cards. And we can see here on the right, uh, yeah, I think you guys can see that. Global average um, is upgrades are one, creatures are 17, actions are 14, artifacts are four. We're actually right on the average with four artifacts, 17 creatures, and actions. We have 15 instead of 14, and the upgrades are zero. So it's literally just the one upgrade off. For being a very avid average spread deck in card type so that's it that's the uh, look at this deck unboxing so if you guys like what you see here hit that like button subscribe if you're new here leave comments below like i said if there's anything you want to see in these videos going forward like i said i have 11 more decks here to unbox at least i'm going to do those all and if you guys like these they get some good views and you guys seem to like them uh i will keep doing them and on future decks i get um and yeah Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.